Hello and welcome to Cloud Radial's Land, Onboard, Manage, and Grow webinar. Uh, today we're going to focus on some, some how you take Cloud Radial and string it all together to make it work for your clients. I'm Jeff Ferris, President and CEO of Cloud Radial, along with Ricky Cicchini, who's our uh, Director of Product Services. Today we're going to go through uh, a little bit of, of the why of how this works, and then uh, Ricky's going to go through with a lot more detail of the stuff that I'm sure you'll find more interesting on uh, how to use Cloud Radial to make that work. So uh, we'll, we'll jump in right away. Just one word of programming note. Uh, we are in Texas. Uh, we are in the middle of a snowstorm and a power grid outage and um, a variety of other plagues. So if for any reason uh, this webinar is cut short or all of a sudden goes black, uh, be sure and keep up to date because we will send you a snow advisory as to when we will be back. So uh, just know that uh, that is a possibility, but knock on wood, we'll make through it. Uh, to get started in the webinar today, the first thing, again, one of the things that's been really great about working with Cloud Radial has been the fact that we've talked to hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of MSPs now on how to, um, how they work with clients and how they can engage with them better. And one of the things, one of the themes that's that's really driving a lot of this uh, stuff that we're working on, and we have got a lot of content on this theme of land on board, manage and grow uh, that you'll be seeing from us over the next few months, uh, is basically the, the problem is, is that, that MSPs oftentimes start off on the wrong foot with the clients and then the whole relationship is, is in a sense trying to recover from that. And bear with me a little bit because I think this will, will make sense as we get through it. But one of the things we wanna focus on in this webinar is getting the client mindset right so, so that they are the most uh, productive they can be and the, also the, the, the most beneficial to you as, a, as, a, as an MSP um, from a, a revenue and efficiency standpoint. Uh, so let's let's dive right in. Uh, first thing I want to go over is kind of the way things are today. And and again, I, this is certainly by no means um, the you know everybody follows this pattern, um, but it, it just it will just bear with me. It's a little bit of a common theme we've been seeing on how MSPs structure that initial sales call. Let's just say you're doing Robin Robbins, you're doing um, uh, Wiser Group, you're doing a lot of different initiatives to get marketing working for your organization. Uh, you've got your appointments, you're, you're busy, you're starting to get the sales calls, and now you get your, your appointment uh, with the client. Typically, it's a three, at least a three-step sales call where you uh, uh, present the value proposition, uh, you deliver, uh, uh, you run the assessment, uh, and then you present the results. And at the end of that, uh, and uh, that sales effort, those multiple meetings uh, based on, you know, lots of money you spent on marketing, you get a chance to sit down in front of the client and present the results. So in what I'll say is the old school approach, uh, i.e. 2018 uh, approach to doing uh, uh, sales, it's basically using the, the available tools in the market um, and putting those together, running those reports, printing them out, and then presenting those to the client. And while there's a lot of things that MSPs typically want to communicate in that presentation, we always have to step back and ask the client, what did they take away from it, right? And if you're gonna give them tools, and these are all, these are all solid tools, but the tools at the end of the day print red. Right. And so so again, as an MSP, a lot of the sales technique um, often comes down to seeing showing clients the red and, ex, and explaining to them uh, that you are qualified to take that red out and, and do away with that fear. So you lead with fear uh, and it's a great sales team. Don't get me wrong. I, I, I love selling with fear. In fact, this whole presentation about is about the fear of you missing out on cloud radio. Right. So, um, I mean, I'm not I'm not an opponent of fear. Um, but I'm just saying at the end of the day, when you present this stuff and you present fear to the client as, as one of the things that they're going to remember out of that presentation, you've now set the mindset with that client that fear is going to be the thing that you deal with. Uh, and that's the thing that they're going to remember from that first presentation. So, which is fine. I mean, it's, it's, it's a way to get the sale. It's clearly worked very well uh, for a long time and, and created a whole industry around, around this problem set. 
But the problem is, as we see in working with, again with our with our base of, of clients, is what happens when the fear is fixed, right? And so when you when you sell on fear and you fix the fear, then the next challenge is going to be, well, now that the fear's gone, are you still relevant to that client? Is there still a role for you to play with that client going forward? Because you fix the things that you identified uh, in that initial assessment things are running smooth and six months into it, what you find yourself doing a lot of times is now reacting to the missing fear with a QBR that's based on status and activity. So when the fear is gone, what you're left to do is go back and explain to the client how that fear is not gonna return because you're doing your job. But again, it's, it's about reselling the missing fear, but again, you've solved it. So what we're going to lay out with Cloud Radio, what Ricky's going to lay out, I'm just here, I'm the pretty boy here to talk about the issues, uh, but is, is what Ricky's going to lay out is the idea of using a, a developing a partnership based client mindset. And so what you're going to do is use something like Cloud Radio to gather all the data, put the data together, basically replace most of what you've done before or certainly complement it to a large extent and put together a presentation of the client, not in paper, but in the portal, right, in Cloud Radio. So you'll start with go, using Cloud Radio as your presentation tool, maybe your primary presentation tool to communicate to clients the value that you're gonna bring. And that value certainly is gonna be removal of fear, right? That's That didn't go away, because again, we print red just as well as anybody else does. But what we're also going to do through the usage of the portal and that collaborative process, we're going to talk about accessibility, transparency, collaboration, productivity, and partnership, right? Because so then when the fear is gone, when you've removed the fear because you've gotten them on boarded, you fixed all their issues, they're back and going, what they're left with is still five really important things that help drive them forward. Uh, and you've also started putting in place a platform to talk about things in the way the client understands. And we've used this diagram before, and we're gonna use it a lot more going forward uh, because the more we use it, the more we've come to believe in it, and the more we've seen success with it with our partners. Because at the, at the end of the day, this is a structure, not of way that you perceive things as a, as a managed service provider, but the way your clients perceive things as a consumer. And the, the, the thing I like to think about and things I like to keep in forefront of my mind is nobody starts a company to buy managed IT, right? Nobody to buy IT, to buy insurance, to buy anything really, other than to do what we're doing. We'd love to just work on cloud radio all of the time, but we have to deal with healthcare issues and we have to deal with uh, uh, recruiting and, and all kinds of things that aren't necessarily related to cloud radio, but they're the foundations on which we build. So if you think about the client's perspective, what they want is better decision-making, better collaboration, um, better, col you know, um, better productivity and, the necessary evils to build on that are all the things down below. So what we wanna do throughout this whole process is get your clients focused on these upper levels where they're most likely to write the checks and to accept the sale. Again, if I solve it from an efficiency layer, low value, maybe high value in, 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 the, in the scheme of things, but low perceived value to the client in the sense that it doesn't help them sell more widgets, right? And so what we wanna do is turn the conversations into those things that help them sell more widgets. So in that initial sales call with Cloud Radio, we're gonna take away the fear, but we're also gonna start setting the client mindset in a much more productive way, right? So, so if we think about really the, kind of the first two things there, which are probably the things that you lead with today, you've got problems, we can fix them, right? And then once those problems are gone, we're easily accessible, right? But beyond that, the next step is like, we're gonna show you where your money's spent, right? You're gonna be in control of the way you spend money because you're gonna see where it's going, right? Again, it's not a, something that you don't, you don't need to know what we're doing behind the scenes. We're gonna keep you fully informed as a client and show you why uh, we're spending what we're spending, why you're getting value for what we're delivering. You're gonna see how we're responding to issues like with our built-in CSAT. Uh, you're gonna be able to focus on things that, that matter to them. If they wanna drive a, a, a laptop refresh to get productivity and to, and to see the benefits, they're gonna see that information in their portal. Um, and and we're going to basically give them a plan for improvement. We're going to show them every all every day where we're going to take them. Um, and that makes you part of the team, right? Because again, if, if you're out of sight, you're out of mind. Uh, and, and 
we do this in every part of our lives and there's no reason to think our clients don't do it as well. So we're gonna be more visible, more transparent, and we're gonna be a part of their team because we're gonna help them with the things that they care about, productivity, collaboration, decision-making, by taking care of the base things really well uh, in this process. So um, as, we, as we work forward on this, uh, we've got, again, probably our biggest initiative um, the first half of this year is what we call this LOMG um, initiative. Now, uh, somewhere along the lines, uh, we're open to better acronyms for this, but uh, the, the core is land, onboard, manage, and grow, right? So again, we wanna help you with every step of that process. We've got a lot of white papers, resources, videos to back this up. They'll be rolling out week by week over the next uh, few months. Uh, and so if you wanna keep update, go to www.cloudradial.com slash L-O-M-G, right? Land, onboard, manage, and grow. So with that, I'm going to turn it over to Ricky so he can show you the good stuff and actually how this works in Cloud Radial. Uh, again, with the caveat that uh, we are in Dallas and hopefully we'll make it through uh, the piece. Ricky's piece uh, will be lots of information very quickly. So you might want to play back the video slowly <laughs> afterwards to see what he's doing. But, uh, but again, remember there's more information to be coming. So uh, Ricky, Lots of uh, a big load is now being dumped on your shoulders. Um, so uh, please don't disappoint. That's uh, you sound like my ex. Sounds good. Um, can I get camera share? Let me let me let me do some screen share action here. Let's do this. Um, let's see here. Hopefully you're seeing the right screen. Is that the demo portal, Jeff? That is the demo portal. Very good. All right. So yes, I have been I've been thinking about how to do this, and I guess I'll give you guys my perspective as well. So obviously Jeff, being more of the the visionary for Cloud Radial, um, I wanted to do something that I thought was more of a hybrid between the two, because I think a lot of the stuff that we've talked about and what Jeff's talking about is really important. We have to know where we're coming from. And I talked to many, many, many of their existing partners that um, for better or worse, go one way or the other, right? They really buy into the vision, which is really good, or they really go into the technicality and they get that. But I think we have to hit that healthy balance of, I'll show you what we're doing, but I wanna to talk to you about why we're doing it and where we're coming from. So that way, not only is it me telling you how to use Cloud Radio as a best practice, but also the mindset behind it and kind of how we envisioned it. So you can also use that to interject your own thoughts, interject your own um, processes and tools and other stuff that you have. So with all that said, I want to start by talking about how this LOMG thing is going to work as a whole. So yes, uh, we've, we've tried to design this process to be um, holistic in the true sense, right? So from the very first time where you meet with a prospect or you hear about them, all the way to the, you know, that's the beginning of the L, all the way to the end of the G, which is the recurring QBRs, things are good, things are growing and all that kind of stuff. And obviously, that's massive. That is not a 50 minute conversation. That is a ton of ton of ton of time. So during this specific webinar, what I'll be doing is I'll be kind of walking you through some of the guides that I've written. And I'm gonna be talking about some of the key elements of what we're gonna do in Cloud Radio and what that's gonna look like from a practical perspective. Now, the actual LOMG sections, we're planning on delving into deeper. So if some of you guys are looking more for a sales discussion, pre-sales, how you can use Cloud Radio, and how the methodologies empower that, definitely catch that. I think the, or, the idea is to go in order, we're gonna kind of tackle it, and that's kind of what Jeff's talking about in that we're going to build on these resources. So yes, I will go quick, but not because I'm necessarily going quick for kicks. I just wanna go and I wanna show you guys what we're working towards and why we're working towards it. And in the specific webinars, again, we'll break down with specific resources on each phase, with specific processes, so there'll be plenty of time to it. This webinar is really intended to show you where we're coming from, from the heart. So with that said, let's start with land. Let's start by talking about what you can use Cloud Radio for. Now, in these webinars, we have a kind of a variety of audiences. We have some people that are already using Cloud Radio. We have some people that heard about it. We have some people that are in trial. So there's kind of a lot of different things. What I'm currently sharing uh, on screen right now is our demo account, which obviously is filled to the brim with stuff. This is an example that would not fit for what we're doing right now because this is an example of a client that is well into the process. But with land, obviously, you're talking about how you can show a prospective client a snapshot of what it's like to work with you. And if I had to summarize kind of what Jeff was saying before, 
we are trying to get to the point where when we talk to a prospect, we're getting past to the trust me approach, which has been a typical problem, right? The trust me approach is that when you meet with this client for whatever reason, you're talking to them and you're trying to show them that you're going to be the right choice for them to pick out of however many other competitors you have in there putting their bids in. So our vision during this phase is to use Cloud Radio as your platform in which you can give them not only a snapshot of what it'll look like to work with you, but as your presentation. So it's very dynamic and very cool. So how do we do that? All right, well, let's start with the concept that yes, you've gotten the meeting, your sales and marketing efforts have paid off and you're in there. Chances are you're gonna be doing a couple of different meetings with them. The very first one is nothing more than listening, right? You're really, you're going in there, you're kind of listening to what their needs are, what their problems are, and, and that's fine. Now, practically speaking, what are you gonna do that, or what are you gonna do with that with Cloud Radio? What we're gonna do is we're gonna go into your Cloud Radio portal, and we're gonna go down to your Partner Act section, and we're gonna go down to your client list. And again, I'm imagining that maybe there's some people in trial or, or having it, so this would be an example of a tenant that already has some clients actually running. So what I'm envisioning here is that we go and actually add a client into your portal. This is the prospect client that you're currently discussing with. And we know that we're not going to have access to their PSA or their Office 365. We're not gonna have access to anything because again, they're a prospect, they've given us nothing. But what we can do is we can actually set them up in Cloud Radio as a shell company basically, right? In a good way, not the bad embezzling way. So we're gonna say, okay, let's call this company Prospect Co. Cool. And we can go through and we can play with all these settings later, but again, for the sake of simplicity and speed of this webinar, I'll just go ahead and mash okay for a lot of the stuff, right? So now what I've done is I've got real clients in the portal. I've now got my prospective company loaded up in here. And for those of you familiar with Cloud Radio, and again, forgive me for those not, what I've done is I've basically mashed in all the defaults. So I've given them the default feature set, which means that they're going to have all of the options available in Cloud Radio, which means literally everything in here from the day-to-day -day intranet stuff all the way down to the QBR stuff. And then I've also not worried so much about their content distribution, right? Cloud Radio being a client portal is obviously built to do a lot of stuff with custom articles, custom tickets, custom this, custom that. We don't care about any of that right now. We're just trying to build them something that we can have as a base of operations. So I've already got some baseline content. I'm using my sample content, one that is currently available to everyone on this webinar and future people. So in Prospect Co, if I were to go ahead and impersonate as an administrator to get to their company, what we're gonna see is that again, I've set up basically a carbon copy of my demo account, but just with the prospective company. Now, what does this do? This now gives me a place that I have an ace up my sleeve. I can literally show them what it would look like to work with me immediately, that's cool. So now we're going to discuss the hierarchy of sales because realistically what's happening in the real world is you've met with them, you've started to identify their needs and maybe you moved on to the next process where you go, aha, uh -huh, okay, now it's time to run your assessments. It's time to, uh, maybe you have like a network detective tool, maybe you're using the cloud radial agent, right? Some people do that uh, to get access to the machines and try to show some value. This is where typically MSPs are very good because they know how to gather data and they know how to aggregate it. And we're just suggesting that this should be your aggregator here because this can be your presentation. And that's really, really powerful because you're setting the expectation and promise from the get-go that you're gonna be as transparent as possible. And this is part of that elimination of the trust theory. You're not saying it will be cool, believe me, I'll show you later. You're saying I will show you today what it'll look like to work with me, right? So a lot of the stuff that we have to do, again, is a little bit more intricate and I can't really do that so easily on the webinar, like downloading an agent, setting up policies. But the idea is that, maybe if we go back to the demo account, when we have some stuff on their computer, one of the things I could do, again, is download that agent to bring in their data. And that's going to, showcase them the kind of visibility I'm trying to give them. And that's important because again, it's not so technical, but really it's trying to show them how it'll look like to work with me. So if I have the agent deployed and I'm pulling a lot of the data, right? This is the agent that Cloud Radio has natively, that's cool. Now I wanna preface this by saying, this information gathering is not necessarily the end goal. Like Jeff was saying, our goal is to establish from this meeting that we're focusing on the core things, the business things. So like he said, we're the same thing. I think fear is a really good accelerator. It does not make a good fuel, right? Fuel, it, the one that you actually wanna fuel yourself on is those bigger promises, efficiency, productivity, decision-making. So the stuff that we're seeing with the agent here, they're doing that red thing, they're doing the fear, right? Unencrypted drives, not saving to the right place. Uh, maybe there's a problem with the configuration being bad. This one is definitely not, it has 32 gigs of RAM, good stuff. But when we look at it, it's like, okay, cool. A lot of these things, right, especially with the agent, the idea for a lot of these is to run them against the policy set. Now, 
all this stuff runs default in Cloud Radio. So even if you don't know what you're doing, you have a way, even if it's not customized, to show them the kind of things you're going to be doing. So that agent data, we're not showing them a big giant mass of technical stuff, we're running it against our rules, and we're showing them, hey, this is how I can present data to you. I can show you where the security things lay. I can show you the continuity stuff. I can show you the compliance stuff. So this is certainly a good option to set up even for a prospective company, because now if you have access to their systems, you can definitely do this for them and show them the snapshot. Say you don't, right? Say that doesn't work for you and maybe you have access with another system or use other reports, that's okay. I wanna remind everyone that Cloud Radio is not built on a uh, monopolizing kind of strategy. We wanna be as helpful as possible to whatever you have uh, in place. We wanna play nicely with other stuff and we just wanna be cognizant of the fact that many different MSPs have different strategies at different levels. So. It's not gonna work necessarily, I tell you to do things the same way, but keep in mind that it's always an option. For those that already have processes, remember that the most important part of this entire webinar is that you're structuring your landing process in a client-facing format, which is what we are trying to do to make sure it's easy for the client to understand. So, if you have other stuff, you got other reports, under the compliance area, you can always, even for a brand new prospect client, I can go and I can build report folders to forward stuff in here. Now. You're gonna see that even though I just created this company on this webinar right now, they already have a bunch of folders that uh, pre-populate. That's because I currently have them set up as a global report archive. So I can show them even what that will look like, right? If they decide to get backup stuff or bright gauge stuff or cloud apps or whatever it may be, I can take those reports and forward it. But again, this is the land phase. Maybe I have some detective tools. So maybe I wanna add a folder, an archive directly now as I'm prepping up their folder, as uh, their, their portal, excuse me, as a presentation, and I wanna put some, uh, maybe some network detection tool report. All right, so I can set a bunch of alert triggers on this uh, if I want to, right now that doesn't really matter to me. I'm just trying to make sure that I can aggregate the data for the landing phase within their portal, cool. So I've got that, I am now currently in the folder. If you wanna see what that looks like, it is now part of the mass of folders that I can already give them. And the idea being now that as I prepare this, right, I might have a sales slide deck or something like that. I can also complement it by putting everything I need into the folder. Each one of these folders that you create in the report archives has the email address that you can forward to. So as you work on stuff, as you do your, your proprietary pre-prep stuff, you've got that in there. Um, another good opportunity for you is still within this compliance area, right? You've got the, the ability to do these uh, automatic forwarded reports, but maybe you also like to run assessments. A lot of our partners like to do the pre-run assessments. That's like, you know, uh, they ask some questions, maybe they do some kind of probing answers. And it's really cool to do those. It's even cooler to show them in front of the client, be able to reference them, because that might make a really cool trophy six months down the line, a year down the line going, hey, remember when I met you and you said you had problems with this, 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 look at how much we've accomplished. So there's a lot of cool stuff being able to put assessments in a client facing format. And guess what? Right here, right? So we've got the reports. We talked policies, we talked assessments. This compliance area can be a really good friend for you during the landing phase. So in the assessments, you could certainly go through and throw an assessment together really, really quickly. So that would be really, really useful to show them. But as you go through, right, you can make these as simple or as complex as you want. And again, this is something I would probably relegate to the landing phase. We could talk about the sample content that we are going to give you guys as far as suggested things to ask and whatnot. But yeah, certainly as we go through, uh, you know, calling our assessment whatever we want, building up the questions, you know, uh, does the person, you know, why do they want to work with us? Why do, what is their biggest pain point, all that kind of stuff and logging it in here. So in so many words, what you end up doing now is that you now have a base of operations where you've got some sample content, obviously now it looks like something. You've got your, maybe your agent and your infrastructure and everything starting to pile up in here and you're starting to forward the report. So even though the client has no access to this, you've prepared a really solid base of operations where you can have that report. So in what Jeff was saying earlier, we kind of imagine this landing phase is a three-stage process, and obviously it may change for different clients. The first stage being that first meeting where you just listen to them, you wanna know their, their, their needs. The second stage being the assessment. That's where you run through some assessments for them, determine if they're a good fit for you, vice versa, right? You determine the scope of it, they determine if you're a good fit for them, they kind of think about it, and then the third phase, the third meeting, is where you actually present this. And this is where a lot of people have, uh, have some stuff, right? This is what I meant by slide decks and all that kind of stuff. People have that presentation. What we're recommending is that you show them the planner and the, the, the portal, really, 
from meeting number one. Because now what it looks like is you can show them again, not a trust me approach, but here's what this looks like. So you can walk them through all the different things that you can offer them, right? You have your catalog of service items right there that they can order from at any point. You have your tickets that they can submit. You have your training courses that they can take whenever they feel like. You've already done your due diligence and you've put it in their portal, right? And this is how they're going to be getting things all the time. So you're not trusting me on anything. You believe me because I'm showing you exactly what I'm gonna give you. And if you were to be a client tomorrow, you'd have this, that's it. So the other thing too is the planner, right? And we'll talk more about this when we finish this conversation today with Grow, but the planner is gonna be a pretty big key of that because our planner is the way that you're gonna be able to lay out what you're thinking for them. Now, as Jeff was saying, there's a lot of conversations to be had about how we present our services and there's a lot of differences between a technical alignment versus a you know, selling your stack versus uh, what they need. I mean, there's there's tons of considerations here, but generally speaking, you've done your due diligence as to what they need right now. And it can be really easy to show them very clearly, right? What are your core services? How do they relate to the problems that you see with them, right? You listened in the first meeting, maybe they have a bunch of efficiency problems and they just need to fix their core infrastructure first. They got a lot of red in their reports. So maybe before we can start to talk about the transformative collaboration, all that kind of stuff. It's like, well, if your laptops suck and everybody's using a laptop that's old, we got to get that done. So that'd be the first thing I do, right? Okay. And maybe you told me that you're a medical company and we got to get uh, that HIPAA compliance assessment. That's something you really want to do. Why don't we lay that out for over here in Q2, right? So this planner, you know, again, we'll talk about it a little bit more, not rocket science, but now you're, you're able to complement your sales process by showing them that you're laying out a roadmap for them and you're able to visibly lay out the roadmap for them before they're ever even your client. Right. So the theory is that you also want to be able to give the client some room to think and chew on stuff. I mean, people take time just like you guys, I'm sure, which I was slower. I'll never slow down. They want you to you know, be able to look at this and kind of think about it for a sec. So having something that's a leave behind is also mega powerful, especially during that land phase. So what we envision is that when you walk away from the meeting and you're kind of done, right, you have all this very valuable information that you've amassed for them. You actually have something you can give them. You can go, hey, if you want access to this information, I can add you to the portal. We can throw them in manually. We don't need their access to their PSA or Office 365, right? We can throw joe at company.com from Prospect Co in here. So Joe, his name is Schmo with an E. And I go, hey, I will make you an administrator in your own portal. And now what's happened is I can give them the URL to my branded portal. I go, hey, Joe Schmo, log in with your email. He's gonna get an email link and he can check out the portal and all of the data that you would be providing him for free. That's your giveaway, right? And what also is really cool about that is that you can track last time Joe Schmo logged in the portal so you can see if he bit right, and he saw the stuff. Now, the theory is there that let's say Joe Schmo and his company says, I like that. I like what you guys have. We're gonna do it and it's time to onboard. The onboarding phase is the O part of LOMG, right? And this is the part where a lot of MSPs do it really good. So land is of course kind of hectic because a lot of people do it different ways and we're trying to standardize that. Onboard, we kind of summarized it into two main goals that we're focusing on. One is to gather data that you need for your own processes. So we're talking about like, you know, anything from passwords to network schematics to you name it, right? I mean, again, this is the stuff that MSPs are very good at because most of the tools on the market are made to do this. But the second thing, and this is where cloud radio comes in really handy, is during the onboarding phase, you need to build that advocacy with the team. And this is the mistake that we see a lot of people make. Not even their fault. I mean, it's just set up incorrectly from the beginning. I think the, a lot of the gut feel of the tool like Cloud Radial is to give it just to the admins, which I could see why. I mean, even myself working here, because a lot of the tools are valuable from a reporting perspective. Uh, certainly, you want the admins to be able to see and the decision makers, that's what I mean when I say admins, to be able to see all of the stuff you're doing for them. But remember that your biggest advocates, and you have a power of changing the advocacy from one person or a team of people to the entire company. And if you have something like Cloud Radio at your disposal, you might have not had that before. You might have not had a tool where you can go, hey, here's your ticket catalog. Hey, here's your knowledge base. Here are your applications that you can share. You now have something of value to share with them and you can customize it. So that's actually how we're going to start thinking about it. Now, what I would do personally, this is what I'm gonna recommend as well to all of you guys, is that we revise our strategy in the land you're trying to show them the possibilities. You're trying to frame everything from that perspective of your hierarchy, your needs. What we're gonna do is we're going to not start them off by this. And I get a lot of comments about this and questions, right? Because this is very overwhelming for everybody. You've shown them your potential, 
but let's start off realistic. This is a, if you're the video game, it's the video games you start off with all the maxed out gear and then you get beat down to the beginning and you go back down to the start. That's what we're going to do. So we're going to go back to our cloud radial main, I'm sorry, this, this digital efforts main tenant. I'm going to go to my partner drop down, and I'm going to go down to my settings. And those of you familiar with me you know I always start my conversations with this. We're going to modify the feature set, aka the type of portal we're going to give the client. Um, now, we've had a lot of discussions internally about what this looks like. And for those that don't know, you can modify all the options that show up on the sidebar of Cloud Radio, meaning that if you really like the idea of a lot of this stuff, but maybe you're not feeling the, the policy so much, and you don't even want that to show up, you can cut that out, right? And that's, that's your feature set. You're basically making different versions of the portal. What I'm suggesting now is that, you know, currently the prospect company is on the, the all features. Or I'm sorry, I believe they're on the default, which is the same thing. They have everything enabled for them, which is what I'm saying is probably too much. So it's a good idea to start thinking about it in terms of this. Start thinking about that phased approach. Even if you're an existing client of Cloud Radio today, I'm talking to you guys, right? Start thinking about how you can get people locked and loaded into the portal faster, a little bit easier. So think about the scope of it. Let's make a new feature set. And maybe we want to make this one not just the default all everything. Maybe I want to make an onboarding feature set. Let's just call it onboarding. And the home page, maybe for the onboarding, again, I want to have that ticketing view. I think that'll be a good start for them. So that's kind of what we have now to get that easy. And I want to hit that healthy balance point where I go, hey, it provides a lot of value. The end users have a reason to use this, but it doesn't overwhelm. So maybe I'll slow down, right? I'll bring up the infrastructure and I'll bring up the security and the compliance and all that stuff will, will come in due time. But right now, my goal is to get those advocates in my portal. It's to make sure that I get the usage and I make sure I have people actually wanting to use it. They don't go, oh, too many options. So we're going to go ahead and do this. So I, I locked and loaded. I got an onboarding feature set. So what happens now is when I go back to my Cloud Radio client list, you're going to see that I have all of my clients, sure enough. And you can see that I have a feature set column. And you can see that we've already built quite a few of these for the demo account. But what I want to do is I want to theoretically move prospect from my landing feature set where I've shown them everything to the realistic onboarding. So I'm going to edit them. I'm going to click on them. I'm going to change their feature set from all features to onboarding. Now what that's going to do is it's going to give me a smaller feature set for them. So let's refresh the page. You should see that happen right now. Very cool. And when we go to prospect, right, they are no longer on this monster feature set. They are on a smaller one that is a little bit easier to manage. Um, now, again, for those that don't know, I have to quit assuming. Know that an end user does not see the full feature set regardless. Even in, for example, this main demo account, an end user is only ever going to see the first four tabs of Cloud Radio, depending on if you even have those enabled in the feature set. So in prospect company, you can see that even though I've made it a little bit smaller, it's still got some other stuff. Um, when I go back to the client list, and I impersonate prospect company not as an administrator, as I currently am, but as a user, the end user is still only seeing, again, the, the tinier limited one. Because again, we know that an end user specifically, they don't need to have all that craziness. But anyways, so we've got that limited down feature set. That's great. Now, what do we do? Because now we're actually onboarding. So again, you're probably doing a bunch of stuff in the background. You're not just doing cloud radio, right? You're doing your assessments of stuff. You're running through, you're running more, more detectives. You're getting your processes. And you want to be able to keep delivering on what you promise. So you're going to set up the framework on everything that you need. And this is where a lot of the stuff is off the portal, off this webinar. So what we recommend doing is, again, keep running maybe those assessments within Cloud Radio, right? Do your onboarding assessment directly in here for them. Maybe you want to get them set up so that they have their account manager information. That's where things like uh, your banners come in really handy, right? If I have something like an onboarding group that I can attach to clients, I can start to target my onboarding clients. My clients, I can think of them in kind of different clusters as they move through this land onboard manage grow. Um, Cloud Radial has this ability to target content based off of company groups. Many of you are familiar with this. And this is our secret sauce at how we scale. And you know, to put it in brief, what happens is you're gonna have a lot of different clients, different clients are different maturity levels, different clients are different industries, and there's gotta be a way to, to control these at scale, right? You wanna be able to say, all my admins from my medical companies get these articles versus my HR people get these tickets. I mean, there's a lot of stuff to think about. And obviously, that's brain exploding right now. But where it comes into play is that you can use a system of company groups, that's how Cloud Radio does it, to target this stuff. And you can see, if we go to partner settings, 
and we go up to company groups right up here under configuration that this is already kind of in play in our demo account now again these company groups are nothing more than ways to help you target stuff and they come into play pretty much all over the platform which again we'll cover later but for the most part what i'm suggesting now is it's not a bad idea to add these company groups and these tags which is basically what they are by phases that the client's moving through and i'll show you where i'm going with this so we're going to go ahead and build our onboarding company groups as well and maybe I could do the same thing for, for other stuff too. So maybe I don't want just an onboarding one, and maybe I even want to land one, and that could be something I could use later on. And you'll see with this stuff that a lot of the things we're going to discuss during this land onboard manage grow is going to be reusable. You're not going to have to come through here and set this up every single time. You're going to know it's like, I already have that. I already did that. I already know what I'm doing. It'll get faster and faster, I promise you. So what I've just done is I've created another group, another label that I can use. And whereas this is going to come in handy, as I had mentioned here briefly, that maybe I want to show them that, send them specific messages, right? I want to be able to start targeting them and I want to start using the portal. One of the features that's really handy when you onboard a client in Cloud Radio, first and foremost, are the banners, right? Banners, of course, typically used for stuff like, uh, you know, outage notifications. You want to be able to show them uh, that you have, you, you maybe want to cut off some tickets of the past by putting that stuff, but they're really, really helpful as well for beginner clients, right? And what I'm going for here is when we go back to our main cloud radio portal, we can go to partner and we can go to our marketing over here. And in the marketing tab, I can actually set up some banners, right? So if I have that nice company group I just created, what I can ostensibly do is I can add a banner and I can say, hey, welcome to the new portal or your new portal or something like that, right? And we can say, hello world. I like lame references. Maybe we'll put a link to Google or, an, or a blog article, realistically, of maybe something else or something you want them to see. And maybe you want to put that on both their, their login page and the home page and stuff like that, too. Now, what this is going to do, right, and you can see that a lot of this is pretty simple stuff, is it gives me a way to put a nice, friendly message at the very beginning. So immediately they're starting to feel like, oh, this is tailored to me. It's not just the generic template that just got dumped on, right? So I use a system of user groups, which is a whole other discussion. Right now, we'll just keep it simple and say, everyone gets this. And we're gonna use our company groups to target that message. And I got my onboard ones. So what I'm now telling Cloud Radio to do is, hey, throw that welcome to the new portal, hello world message to everyone in the onboarding group, right? And again, you could have this running forever. You could have this running for a little bit of time. That's up to you. Um, as we go back, you're gonna see that your strategy is gonna evolve for your client. So just like we moved the prospect company into onboarding as far as the feature set we'll probably end up adding them as well to the company group of onboarding on row peer groups and i'll throw them in the onboarding group now what i'm doing is again this is starting to evolve the strategy and to keep in mind that a real account manager would not be doing this 14 minutes apart like this so it seems like a lot of work but i promise it should be a pretty easy kind of step-by-step -step thing so with prospect company, what's gonna happen now that they're part of that group, they're gonna get messages like this, right? Welcome to the new portal. Here's your account manager's information. Here's where to go for some contact details. Maybe I wanna throw some articles specifically for the onboarding group on there. I'm starting to develop that strategy and make sure that onboarding is as smooth as possible. And I'm using that client facing strategy. I have promised them and land throughout the whole thing. And maybe like we saw before with the report archives, maybe I'm adding more and more stuff to their portal and we can always expand this. And this is what I was saying before, this depends on what you guys are comfortable with, what you like to do and how you tweak it forward, right? You may want something bigger than this or you may want something smaller than this from a feature set perspective, but you're just trying to make sure your ducks in a row and that the entire time you're onboarding them, you are getting more and more comfortable with putting things in their portal and showing this as, as, a, as the base of operations. The reason being, aside from just being an open book, is that you are now setting the expectation from the get-go before the bad habits have formed that this is the place to go for putting in tickets, for getting updates, for doing all that kind of stuff. This is the place, and that's gonna help you dramatically increase usage. But let's talk about realism. So let's go to manage, right? So LOM, the M in, in LOMG is manage. Manage is where most of our clients meet us because what's realistic for us is we talk to a bunch of clients and when people usually come to Cloud Radio, again, I would be so bold as to say many people on this uh, call are probably here, most people don't come to us saying, hey, I've never had a client in my life, how do I do that? You probably already have clients that you're looking to improve their current experience, right? You're looking to wrangle the management of all this kind of stuff. So 
really manage is an interesting one because as you saw it really helps when you have this kind of uh this backing for it and and like jeff was saying like i'm saying the theory behind what we're saying i think is nothing rocket science -y. this this stuff is nice to be able to walk through but again the challenge is taking someone who's already been through certain processes and retrofitting them into, into something that is scalable like this can you do it totally and i'll show you what the what the goal is so in both cases i'm assuming that we're going to continuing on with our prospect company but also realistically, it could be your actual companies that you load up in here. So what am I gonna do? Well, in the case of your real clients, I would probably say that I would start them off on something kind of like our, our, our uh, onboard feature set, because I still think even though it's a, an existing client, anytime you load someone in new, I kind of say this in the guides that I've written, which I will be sharing later on when we do our relevant land onboard manage grow specific webinars, um, that's where you still want to take them slow and i think the onboarding uh guide and the onboarding processes still have merit at any point i think even for your existing clients it's worth taking a look at because i think a lot of those processes come into play even for existing clients but anyways uh in theory what we'll do is we'll we'll slowly again if we're taking the phased approach we're going to open up another feature set we're going to create another one we're going to gradually take time to expand out the portals the clients get more familiar as they understand the processes we're not just going to have this limited onboarding feature set, right? Which again, we have right here. What we're gonna do is we're gonna build another one. And maybe we wanna make a managed feature set or we wanna make the regular one or something like that. And then this one, maybe we pop open more and more stuff. So whereas the other one we had turned off infrastructure and security and all that kind of stuff, maybe now all we have turned off is these two. Maybe we wanna leave on infrastructure and compliance and we have some more stuff in there. So I've got more advanced things and you can see that this is kind of a one-time process. As you develop your different stages and how you envision the onboarding going, the, the whole process, what happens is your job is just to manage how these guys grow. So you, you take stock of your clients, where are they at, where can I get them to grow? As they're more and more ready, you have something that not only you guys can manage internally as a team better, but you have something that the client appreciates because again, their portal grows. It looks like you're developing, it looks like you're growing it as they need. So I'll change Prospect Co. one more time not just from the onboarding, but now they're ready for the managed feature set. And now they're gonna see a bit more, so they're ready for it. Again, it's not gonna mess with the end user experience because the end user probably won't see most of the stuff we're gonna turn on anyways, because it's gonna be past the university, the first four tabs. So when I refresh now, right, they've moved on a bit more. Maybe I wanna take them out of the onboard group because they're ready for the bigger stuff, I don't know. So that's that's the kind of call that we can make. Maybe I wanna change their home page because now they don't necessarily need the ticketing. Maybe I wanna focus more on strategy. This is part of that evolution of how you want to work it all um, out for them. Now, in this stage, and this is very common for a lot of people too, it's not just about pushing out a baseline portal of standard stuff, which is what I've done here, right? You saw that I put exactly zero effort into customizing the portal, and that's also not accurate. After you've gotten them onboarded, and after you've gotten even your existing clients uh, put in the portal, of course, what's going to happen is you're going to start to realize opportunities and necessities for custom stuff. So obviously Cloud Radio has a lot of different features from the applications to the courses to the KBs and all that kind of stuff. And part of the promise that we've given them is not just transparency, it's not just collaboration, but it's something that offers value to everybody in the organization all the time. So in order to do that, in order to add value, guess what? You need to listen to them and you need to grow with their needs. So what we're gonna do is I kind of have some, some core areas that I think end up adding a lot of value for them. And we want to spend a lot of the managed phase understanding our clients, hearing their, their, their needs, hearing their feedback, and tweaking the portal to fit that, right? So maybe you talk to them, and we'll start right here, right, in the applications. You've talked to them, and then you, you realize that, uh, you know, they use a whole system of applications, a line of business apps that, that they really want access to, and you want to make the portal more useful for them. So we're going to go ahead and add them. We're just going to throw some ads, some applications on here right now, right? I can throw them on existing categories, let's say, uh, let's just make one called applications, right? Maybe we want to do one. They're really big Google fans. Turns out a lot of people are big Google fans. We'll throw a little Google action on there. Spelled correctly. There we go, right? So this would be replace this with whatever you're trying to do. And all of a sudden, I'm going to throw some icon on there, make it fancy. Google. Nice. Sweet. So what's happening now is now. I'm not delivering the portal. I'm delivering something that's been working. I'm delivering something that's adding value. And now all of a sudden they want to use it because they realize it's like, hey, I can use this for my stuff. Totally. That's the whole point of a shared experience. This, of course, works to go to google.com or whatever. So 
So this is a really common area that you want to build out when you're when you're running the manage phase. Once things have stabilized, you're done with that initial honeymoon slash let's move into the together, right? Everything's kind of settled. What can get better? And that's part of the promise you'd made them. Things are going to get better. Things are going to get better and better and better. So applications is certainly a really good area to start them off with. Uh, the knowledge base is certainly a very good area to start them off with, right? Building on more documentation for them. Starting off with a wealth of knowledge uh, is very important. This stuff, of course, for those that know Cloud Radial, comes from kind of a global template area, kind of a global distribution area known as the partner content area. That is a whole discussion in and of itself. But for right now, all you need to know is you can build out a baseline portal for people so you don't have to come up with one from scratch, right? So what I'm talking about right now is further customizing it to make it more relevant. So we've got all that stuff. We go through, maybe their tickets no longer cut it, right? You built the template uh, baseline catalog. Uh, that's not going to work. All of a sudden, you got to have custom tickets for them too. So we got to customize those tickets. So the manage phase is where most people, again, mentally come to Cloud Radio because this, this is what they're looking for. They're looking for something that supports scalability, but also supports flexibility, which almost seem like enemies of each other to a degree, but they don't have to be, right? There's, this is our, our, our concept to it. Template, the baseline, plus some on top of it. So as you go through and you get all this stuff down, you've got a couple opportunities. Obviously, yes, you can spend the rest of your days customizing the portal for them, or you can show the client that this can be done and you can turn the keys over to them. You can actually enable users within their companies to add their own content, which means you've now made it uh, feasible for them to manage their own portal and that gives a lot of value back to them. And that also reduces operational uh, stress on you because that means you're no longer having to be their, their white glove support adding apps and stuff. I mean, as you saw, it's pretty easy. I can do it on a webinar with you guys. I'm sure somebody can add one link once. So we got this kind of stuff and that's cool for the client side. This is also a really good opportunity for you guys on the service desk side and the account manager side. And this is what's going to lead us to the final phase of grow. So it's not enough that we just launch off the, the, the baseline stuff, or maybe it is, that's your call. But when we go through this, right, the opportunity from the service desk side is to fine tune and tweak things because theoretically what we've done now is we've given them the templates and those have been fine, but chances are you probably want to go deeper into that, right? From a service desk perspective, one of Cloud Radio's powers is to be able to be very, very specific and speak very nicely to the PSAs. So when we add tickets and whatnot, let's say we're customizing them. I'm in the mindset that prospect company is going to need more than just this. They have a custom PCI thing. So we're going to make a PCI compliance, well, let's call it PCI category. PCI ticket, we're going to say test, right? This would be whatever their, their test stuff is. Now, Cloud Radio obviously is, is notoriously good and notoriously bad about this kind of stuff. Good because the customization capability is pretty much infinite because it keeps things very simple. Bad because it depends on you on how deep you want to go. And a lot of people kind of fall in the black hole of like, ah, too much stuff. That's up to you. That's up to you to stop and go, here's what we need right now, which is what we're emphasizing this whole way through. So theoretically, I would build out my PCI ticket. What I'm talking about for the service side is these kind of tinier details. If I were to just mash submit right now, this ticket would work. It would go to my PSA and it would be fine, but it would have the bare minimum details. And this is what I'm talking about from a streamlined perspective. Maybe I want to go and I want to start doing the final touches on a lot of this stuff. Oh, little confirmation messages that pops up saying, thanks for your submission or some follow-up steps. Or maybe I want to route it not, not nicer, right? And I want to be like, I don't just want it to go to a board with a status and a priority, but I want to start fine tuning that triage. And this is where the minutes start to add up and they start to save you time, or I guess don't add up the opposite. So the types and the subtypes and the items and tweaking it and doing your web hooks, this is your opportunity once the client has been stabilized to figure out those flows and slowly get faster and faster and better and better and better and be able to deliver things from a, at least a service perspective very quickly. The same can be said for the account managers who typically have a really big problem when it comes to the notorious QBR in prepping for stuff. Now, the brilliance of what we've done so far, right? I know I've been mentioning setting up some custom stuff, uh, building all these different things. The brilliance is if you've been following this kind of process from land, the prep stuff is kind of done. And I'll show you what I mean by that. I mean, if you've set up your assessments, you've set up all your reports, everything's auto forwarding, an account manager is no longer having to scramble and set up the policies and set up the reports and set up all this kind of stuff. Their job now is to be proactive. And that's a really important distinction because now what they're doing is they're changing from an aggregation strategy and a defense, like Jeff was saying, right? We're no longer defending our services to now 
throughout the whole process, we've done what we said we'd do. We deliver them the visibility to see all the stuff whenever they need it. So the QBRs are spent not gathering data, not defending all the stuff that we've done, not clicking through the portal and looking at every single thing, but talking about the bigger strategy and what we see versus what that means. And that is far more valuable to the clients. So what that ends up meaning for an account manager, and again, we'll talk about this in Manage as well in the webinar, is an account manager's day-to-day, -day, not the QBR, but their day-to-day -day during Manage, looks something more like this, right? Maybe they might go check out the ticket history for that client, which I didn't set up the PSA IDs yet, so you would have done that at some point. But they're able to see the ticket history. Maybe they want to see some, some, some repeat issues that they want to notate, right? Maybe they want to take a look at the infrastructure and they want to see some general notes of here if this means anything to them, right? Or better yet, they want to use the policies to be able to see any highlighted issues. Uh, maybe they want to check out the report archives to see how the reports have come in, if anything has been failing, if anything has been coming in weird. The fact that this is an aggregator tool for the client does not mean it can't be used for the account manager. In fact, quite the opposite. This is a really valuable tool for an account manager to aggregate everything in here and have one spot from their side of things to manage it. Um, maybe they want to look at the assessments. Maybe they want to run some more stuff. And maybe they want to look at, I don't know, the dashboards, which are basically an introduction of, of all the same stuff. I mean, this is not new information. This is just where they're able to aggregate all of it. So what they're doing during the manage phase, so not during the QBR, they're trying to solve and fix all the tiny issues. They're calling out the stuff that maybe the client themselves explicitly isn't, and they're just trying to be really proactive about that. And what that's going to do is it's going to show the client uh, by the time they actually reach the QBR, which we'll talk about here in a sec, that we've already taken care of all the small stuff. So you don't even have to worry about that, right? We have the, the visibility that we show you exactly what we see, why we're seeing it. If I need your approval, I'll get it. But at the in the meantime, right, small issues we can totally take care of. So that is just by the nature of knowing where to check and how to check and expanding out the feature set. Now, let's get to the grow phase. Let's get to the, the, the big strategic QBRs. And this one we'll keep kind of brief here too, because this one is a whole ex explanation. But uh, the QBRs have traditionally been, of course, very painful for both sides, both the client and the, um, the MSP team. The MSP team obviously has a little bit of a, a, an easier time because their job has been aggregation and finding a proof and, and making the, the presentation interesting. I say easier time because there's tools that can do that. Cloud Radio is no different. Again, there's, there's probably people out there that are using multiple tools anyways, maybe even with Cloud Radio. That's okay, right? Whatever you think ends up giving the client the most value. But that's the biggest issue, isn't it? It's the client's pain from here is the value. It's these meetings typically run long. They're hard to follow. There's a lot of stuff. Uh, they vary. Uh, so some clients may require two seconds to prep for because they have nothing. Other clients are really big. And that standardization, that wild west of the QBR has been a friggin' nightmare for most people out there, at least most people I've spoken to. So again, like I said, what comes into play here is that when we go down to the planner, right? Hello, my old friend. We talked about you during the, the land phase. So we know what we're talking about. We know that it's the same old players here. And maybe it's actually advanced over time. So the way that we talked about it in land was laying out that strategic plan. And we've probably done some of this stuff right now. Guess what? They do have that laptop refresh. We did that project. It was the first thing we did. We ran into the compliance assessment. That's nice. We've actually implemented managed services too. And maybe for next year, we're starting to do the conference room upgrade. This is where, as an account manager, I start to have far more flexibility and customization over what we talk about. Because now, it's not so much about getting cards moved across the board, which is a, a fine way. Like Jeff was saying, this is fear, right? We want to make sure that your reds get addressed, that your stuff gets moved across the board. But now we're starting to help them understand, hey, we really want you to work up towards having an Office 365 productivity suite. What do we need to do to do that? Why do we want that? Because you don't care, right? You just want to be able to get what you want. You want to be able to have your people work and do that. Like nobody has time for me. So I'm going to frame it in a way to you that makes it seem uh, irresistible because that is what drives your business. And these are opportunities. And again, if we've done our homework before, we've put everything out uh, ahead of time. I don't have to spend my QBR defending all my work. I can spend time building the plan for them and showing them my rationale. So as I run through various areas, I can show them it's like, hey, hmm, we got to deal with this security issue before we can get to the productivity because I can't have you shooting out a mobile device policy to a thousand people if nobody else is secure with, with MFA, right? So maybe we want to talk about having a security offering that does this. Not selling security itself necessarily, but maybe the idea is a stepping stone to something else because 
as a business owner, security is always a checkbox to me, right? Level one, level five, advanced security, IPS, I don't matter to me. As long as I'm secure, that's all I care about. You're, are you telling me I'm secure? Yeah, I could be more secure, but I'm already secure. I don't know, it loses potency. But when you frame some of these things as, again, the stepping stones, that hierarchy we were talking about before, that's really, really powerful because all of a sudden now you're not just talking about a specific thing, right? And for those that need visual aid, as I somewhat do, we're talking about these things, right? We're talking about how to get up the line. Um, so putting this in prospect, uh, and we're, we're talking about how to, how to run the planner for them, is not just going and pitching them on a thing. It's not just talking about it. It's about using the mixture of real data that we've aggregated throughout the entire engagement and showing them how we're gonna get out of this. Because again, we promised all this value and this visibility and land. We set it up and we built the framework around it in the onboard phase. You made it possible and you tweaked it and managed. Now we're gonna sow, uh, uh, or I guess reap what we sowed in, uh, in all those other phases, right? So I'm able to run through, I'm able to point out stuff, right? I'm gonna use my main account that actually has data in there. I'm able to go through the dashboards and go, hey, Right. We want to talk about having a security thing. Well, I can't get you to the big goal if I got to deal with these small things first. So here's the big plan. And this is what we're again, Jeff was talking about. It's about clearing the red. Yes, it's a good accelerator. Absolutely. But the bigger goal is that every time we beat something, we're on to the next thing. We're on to the next thing. So they're excited to build that base to keep going up and up and up and up and up because there is no stopping the growth. There is always going to be new challenges. There are always going to be new services. There are always going to be new things that pop up and become something that we wanna do. Um, again, we're gonna talk about this one in extreme depth in the growth thing. This is a very, very high level overview. I guess the last thing here too is the ability to track and say no and being able to review them. Just a minute on that, right? So again, realism always comes crashing down and everything doesn't always go the way you want, but that's something else that Cloud Radio is very powerful for. So you wanna also notate when people say no to stuff. So if somebody says no to your security, they say no to the plan. Being able to edit some of these things, edit some of these cards and, and write that down and say, hey, what's going on? Why not? Okay, John said no, that's fine. Right click on the cards, move to options. And now what's happening is we're focusing the planner on the tangible, the real, what's, what's recommended, what's focused. We have visibility and we're giving them visibility on stuff they said no to. So that means that we have that accountability in the portal, right? This is a mixture of all the other stuff that we saw too. This is, happens all the time, especially with, uh, for example, assessments. As I run them through an assessment, I can see that they failed the assessment 10 times. We ran it 10 times over the course of two years. It's okay. I mean, there's only so much you guys can do as an MSP to get your value across. Sometimes for as good as the strategy is, the client may just not be the client that listens. And that is really, really important. So what I'm talking about here, what I'm talking about in general, I'm trying to get you guys to do the best you can do, but sometimes you just gotta realize it's not your fault. There's just nothing to do here. So. Where this really comes into play is as you do this, not just for Prospect Co, but now we're talking about everybody. Now Prospect Co, you ran the planner for digital efforts, which looks crazy different, busy and all that kind of stuff because it's got so much stuff, right? You're able to scale that up so you can give a consistent experience from the small guys to the big guys. You have the same building blocks, you have the same power, the account manager has the same fields to check. That now has become a scalable process and that's become a visible process for all your clients. Um, so from an account manager's perspective, they're able to go to the partner planner, not the account planner, which is what we've been playing in. This is the one local to the client. And they're able to see all of the services, all of the cards across every client and all the different sub statuses and all that on there. Why is this important? Because this, from your perspective, starts to lay out your growth plan, not just the clients, which is a big part, but your growth plan. So you got all this stuff, it's all captured in one area. Let's run a sales matrix against it. And all of a sudden what we can do is we can start thinking about the future of your MSP, right? What do you sell? Who do you sell it to? What client do you have loaded up uh, that is not listening to you, right? What, every single time I bring up something to prospect code, they just say not considered. You know what? It turns out that even though they've seemed like they were pretty cool and they were aligned, they're not worth it for me because they don't listen to me. They, they constantly get hacked. They do this, they do that. And I got a paper trail in here. So this is gonna help me understand who's worth keeping if you look at it this way, right, across the row. Now, if you do the columns instead, what does this tell you? Well, it tells me that maybe I need to improve my marketing around this. I need to make sure that the value is better. I need to improve my stack. So there's lots of analysis that can happen here. I know I'm coming very short on time, but luckily I'm nearly out of breath. So that's, that's pretty good. So I wanna end by saying that, guys, this is a huge strategy. I mean, there's a lot of stuff to land, onboard, manage, grow. I promise you Cloud Radial is built 
to, to handle this. And this is something we're consistently getting better at. And I hope this webinar has helped you understand how to use Cloud Radial, how we can kind of build up for it, and gives you better ideas and framings of how we're coming at it to empower you guys. So any ideas for feature requests or thoughts and all that kind of stuff, we're gonna to try to more and more and more frame this in this way because that's what's gonna help us really master that whole client experience of the whole uh, life cycle. So with that being said, I will delete for Prospect Co, or I guess I'll leave it up here, maybe. And, uh, and I, I thank you all very much for attending. And I will also ask Safi, my secret uh, person behind your the secret camera. Assistant, your secret assistant in the dark. So. I assume she's the only one on the webinar, guys. I don't know. Yeah, no, no, there's there's a lot of us. So we are, as you know, in Dallas, um, Texas right now, and we're boiling water. And I think Ricky's been without power and internet for a few days. And But we got through the webinar and we're thrilled. Um, but want to thank everyone for coming today. And as you can see, this series will be evolving. And we will, of course, send you updates and keep you posted. Uh, make sure to check the events calendar, which is at www.cloudradial.com slash events. And we'll keep posting up our webinars. So many of you have asked um, if we're going to send a recording. We are. Um, if you registered, which you have, if you're you're on the webinar, um, if you've registered, if you've registered and you're even not attending, um, this will automatically go out and we will send the recording as well as Jeff's PowerPoint. Um, but, you know, any comments, questions, please let us know. And again, thank you so much for coming today. And we look forward to talking to you again soon. Yep, let's dive into it and actually get into the bigger details where I'll be giving you actual stuff, which is what most of you are here for. So thanks for listening to me blab about the theory first. <laughs>